Good morning. Welcome back. Start you off as usual with the radar, all of them running, the satellites running as well. There is absolutely nothing out there. In fact, you're hard pressed to find a cloud. Well, you have a couple of tiny little pockets of fog down by the river. That's because moisture evaporates off the river, and that's where we get those little ribbons as we move into fall and winter. But for most of us, it's going to be another mild and warm day. We have no watches or warnings. We are not anticipating any, even though I am tracking two systems headed this way. Winds fairly light this morning, all between about zero and nine. They've been out of the east now that we're getting closer to the full morning, those will switch back to the west by southwest, and those will be pulling in a dry air. In the overnight hours, we were able to get the dew points to rebound a bit into the low 20s in the high country, teens to low 20s for us as well as Montrose, and only 11 in Moab. But there is some hope that it won't be exceptionally dry. We look at humidities this morning. They bumped all the way up to 75 for Gunnison and Glenwood Springs in the overnight hours, 63 for Aspen. And thanks to downsloping winds last night, some of that moisture in its gas form did roll down the hills at us. That's allowed Montrose to go back to 61, 36 in Grand Junction, 43 in Delta. But over the next few hours, once we get further into the morning, sunshine will drive all of that moisture away. Let's pull out, look at the entire state. Not only is it a fairly mild day for us in western Colorado, but by late tonight into tomorrow, much different story for eastern Colorado. We take a look at the satellite scan from last night of the snow. Still plenty of snowpack in place. So if you're traveling along 50 or you're going to take the 70 into the passes, be cautious the next few hours because snow melt yesterday evening gets on the roads like it did in the overnight hours and you wind up with little spots of black ice. And you get an idea, there's plenty of snow out there that melted in little sections. We are also tracking a fairly large fire northwest of Santa Fe, New Mexico. That smoke coming off that column is drifting up to the southwest side of the state. Down by Durango, it's being reinforced by a fire, a small one outside of Durango as well. So if you're traveling down 50, you could have black ice in the next hour or two. Then you're going to wind up in a smoke column down by Durango before you cross into New Mexico. I told you, tracking two systems. This one moves in late tonight into tomorrow. You notice a lot of cloud there, no real energy. It's what I would call an all bark and no bite system. And even the cold air with it, will not do much because the Rockies, as usual, will act as a shield. I am tracking a second storm system that can produce thunder, what we would call the bite instead of the bark. It's a wave of energy coming off California, already creating storms this morning down in Arizona. It will continue to do that as we move through the day all over New Mexico, creating severe weather tonight in the overnight hours, stretching from the Texas Panhandle to Oklahoma and eventually pulling away. And if you noticed, all of it missed us. Both systems coming at us, one from the Pacific Northwest, the other off the edge of California. They collide with each other along the eastern New Mexico border and into the panhandle where there is, in fact, a tornado threat today. Because, yes, in fall, you can wind up what's known as the fall severe weather window. Most folks think of tornadic weather being only in the spring, but that's not the case. As the earth tilts back, we get another window in the fall, just not as strong as the normal spring season. That means that in Oklahoma today and in the Texas panhandle, they have severe storms, especially tonight. For us, Absolutely clear. We go through your HD future gas computer. There is nothing there today, nothing there tomorrow, and nothing there even on Friday as the high pressure will continue to dominate. So now that we know what's going to happen, we know that it will be a nice day. A high of 65 this afternoon, mostly sunny and warm. Winds 5 to 10 gusts up to 15 are possible. No chance of rain or snow at all. Zero chance there. You've got high pressure, sunshine, and dry air. That is not a combo that creates any form of moisture. 50s for highs into the high country, mid 60s into the valleys, even maybe a low 70 on the Utah side into the desert. What about tonight? Well, another cold night. We're going to go down to 29. Nothing to trap in that heat. Mostly clear and cold. Winds will shift east 5 to 10 with classic everyday downslope flow off the mountains. Teens in the high country to the upper 20s. In the valleys, upper 20s to low 30s. And the same is true out in Utah. So now we know what's going to happen tonight. What about the next seven days? The next chance that a real storm system does not occur until Sunday. Not even then, only going about 20%. Why? Because the computers can't agree if we'll even get a shot of that one. They very well could do the same thing. The two systems I just showed you, they are going to miss us by 200 miles. Now, we'll have a complete checkup check coming up later on in the broadcast.